welcome to lecture 3 on module 9. Uh, in this module, we are discussing on radiator, uh, radiation heat transfer and last couple of lectures we have discussed on radiation and there we try to introduce ourselves about the very basic concepts uh, related to radiation and also we have seen how to calculate that view factor or shape factor and what would be the view factor or shape factor for different kind of geometries. That is what we have discussed in the last lecture. Now, in this lecture or today's this third lecture, we are going to discuss on radiation heat exchange, which is the most important thing that how the heat transfer takes place uh, out of radiation. That is what we are going to discuss. So, to start with, what we will do is that we will uh, we'll start with the radiation heat exchange between uh, black bodies. So, radiation heat exchange between black bodies. Okay. So, this is what we will first see. So, now consider the two black bodies or say two black surface if I say the surface 1 and surface 2 okay, and they are exchanging radiations. Okay. So, like this is surface 1 and this is surface 2, this is 1 and this is 2, they are exchanging radiations. So, the conditions are that uh, surface 1 area is say A 1 and then temperature is equal to say T 1 and surface 1 because it is a black body its emissive power power is equal to say E B 1. Similarly, for surface 2 area is equal to A 2 temperature is equal to T 2 and emissive power will be equal to E B 2. So, this will be the uh, things between the two surfaces. Now, the net the rate at which the radiation emitted by surface 1 and that is received by surface 2. So, the rate at which radiation emitted by surface 1 and uh, that is received by surface 2. That means, I am saying it as q dot 1 2 that will be equal to f 1 2 E b 1 into a 1. Actually, E b 1 into a 1 is the total radiation that is being emitted by surface 1, but f 1 2 is the view factor. So, this says this confirms that this much amount of f multiplied by f 1 2 this much amount is received by the surface 2. That means, uh, f 1 2 is we know that it is maximum value is 1 or it will be less than 1. So, a fractional amount of the radiation emitted by surface 1 is received by surface 2. So, in the similar way we can say that similarly uh, the rate at which radiation emitted by surface 2 and received by surface 1 is say q dot 2 1 okay? and that will be equal to f 2 1 now e b 2 into a 2. Now, at steady state or we can say that the net exchange between these two between two surfaces would be q dot 1 to net between 1 to 2 net and that will be equal to from q to 1 to 2 minus q dot 2 to 1. So, it will be basically q dot 1 to 2 minus q dot 2 to 1 that will be the net from 1 to 2 and that is becoming f 1 to a 1 e b 1 minus f 2 1 a 2 e b 2 sorry. And then what we can say that this is equal to e b 1 minus e b 2 by 1 by 
a 1 f 1 2 and because how could we write it because we know that a 1 f 1 2 is equal to a 2 f 2 1 this is from reciprocity relationship we have discussed in the last class. Okay reciprocity relationship. Therefore, now if we see that this equation is becoming now driving force, force by resistance. We can write like this. So, if we write that electrical analogy, then this is the resistance and this is the driving force. So, E B 1 is the potential for the first uh, surface emission potential. So, that much amount of energy can it can emit. So, E B 2 is the emission potential for the surface 2 and this is 1 by A 1 F 1 2 is equal to 1 by A 2 F 2 1. So, this is nothing but the resistance. So, we are getting current, current is nothing but the heat current here and that is equal to Q dot 1 2 net. This is the current and that is becoming the driving force uh, or the change the differential potential. So, E B 1 minus E B 2 by the resistance is 1 by A 1 F 1 2. So, this is what is the electrical analogy to this and this resistance 1 by A, A 1 F 1 2 equal to 1 by A 2 F 2 1 this is called a space resistance. Because we understand that it, it is the how that one uh, surface 2 is located with respect to surface 1. So, it is the space spatial arrangement that is important in this resistance because of this view factor is important. So, therefore, this is called a space resistance. So, uh, the resistance with the view factor is the space resistance between two bodies. Okay? Now, so if we have say uh, for n enclosure, so the, we have shown it for two cases. Now, we can have say n enclosures which is which are uh, exchanging uh, radiations. Okay? In that case, the net rate of radiant energy loss by say surface some surface i is a uh, is a typical a surface i representative surface because of radiative interaction with all the surfaces including itself So, that means, uh, uh, it will be given as q dot 1 to i that is net okay? and that will be equal to summation j is equal to 1 to n for all the surfaces. So, i not equal to j is not the case because of for all the surfaces. Okay? Now, a i a f i j sigma t i to the power 4 minus t j to the power 4. Okay? Now, uh, it, it, it is a case like this if we consider like this so suppose this is a case so this is surface 1 so it is exchanging heat with these different surfaces okay these are different surfaces it is exchanging energy so this is the surface i and is going to say 1 2 3 4 5 and like that so n surfaces like that can be there in an enclosure this is an enclosure of say 6 surfaces. Okay? So, typical uh, that kind of things. Now, also under thermal equilibrium, under thermal equilibrium uh, T i will be equal to T j for the enclosure. Okay? And when there is a thermal equilibrium, then Q dot I net will be equal to 0. This has to be 0 okay, when there is no driving force for that. Now, this is what we have seen for two black bodies 
and they are radiating, uh, uh, they are uh, having heat exchange due to radiation. Now, in normal situation is that non black bodies. So, we will see that radiation exchange say between non black bodies. So, what happens actually that in case of black body, we know that whatever radiation is coming in it is getting absorbed because absorptive is equal to 1 and emittivity is also is equal to 1. So, whatever radiation is coming on to somebody it is getting absorbed, but it is not getting reflected anymore. It is not getting transmitted also, but there are non black bodies whose absorptivity is always less than 1. So, there is a part of the whatever is coming on to it is everything is not getting absorbed part of this is going away and that is going away in the form of maybe reflection not transmission is not being taken into consideration is going away by reflection mode. So, in that situation the, uh, uh, the, the analysis becomes little difficult and in a, actually why everything is not absorbed onto the surface of a non black body that means uh, there is a, another resistance which we can think of that there, there is an existence of another resistance and that is resisting that uh, rest of the amount to be absorbed into this body in comparison to black body. So, let us see that uh, how to analyze that and how to get that resistance. In fact, for that reason for analysis of uh, non black bodies what we will do is we will take up our two terminologies. These two terminologies are G E radiation denote as G and the definition of this is that total radiation G is total radiation that heats a surface per unit area and per unit time. So, its unit is watt per meter square it is a pretty simple uh, simple definition that whatever is coming onto a surface that is what is irradiation it is irradiated and similarly j another thing is called that is called radiosity which is given as capital j and this is the total radiation that leaves a surface that leaves a surface again and this this is by uh, reflection or emission. So, reflection or emission these are the two mechanisms by which the energy can be leaving a surface ok. This is per unit area per unit time. So, its unit is also watt per meter square. So, these are the two terminologies that is being defined. Now, for black body, this is diff these are defined for non black bodies, but for black body we know that E b is due to total emission and that is equal to j where rho equals to 0, transmittivity is equal to 0, there is no ref uh, sorry reflectivity is equal to 0. And these things have been defined that there is no transmission, transmission of energy ok of radiation energy. Of, of incident energy. Okay. Now, under this situation what happens is then we will assume that uh, for this analysis during this an analysis that we will assume uh, some assumptions are that um, uh, radiation is diffuse surface temperature is uniform ok and uh, G and J are also uniform over the surface. So, these are the two assumptions three assumptions that we are taking for this analysis. Now, if I see that this is the surface. So, what is happening is so this is the incident that is G and this is something which is going out that is J and that is basically summation of the two epsilon that is emissivity into 
this that is called E b is the black body emission, m c b 2 into E b is the non black body emission plus rho into g. So, rho is the transmittivity uh, sorry reflectivity. So, whatever is incident is g into the reflectivity that is going out as the in the form of reflection. Okay. Now, and q by dot by a I am sorry q dot by a that is equal to j minus g. So, then we can say that radiosity j is equal to sum of the energy reflected by and uh, emitted so, uh, sum of energy reflected and emitted and that is equal to we know that epsilon sorry. So, reflected part is first. So, it is uh, rho into g plus f epsilon into E b that is what this is the emitted. Now, again we know uh, uh, already we have discussed that this is the g is the incident energy into the trans, uh, reflectivity. So, it gives the total energy that is reflected and E b is the emissive power in multiplied by the emissivity is the amount of energy emitted and e equals to 1 for black bodies. Okay. Now, rho is equal to 1 minus alpha and that is also 1 minus epsilon provided Kirchhoff's law holds good according to the Kirchhoff's law alpha is equal to epsilon that we have seen in the last lecture. Then we can say that j is equal to epsilon e b plus 1 minus epsilon into g. Now, if we carry forward this derivation, we will see that q dot by a is equal to say q dot net energy is equal to j minus g that is the net energy leaving the surface, net energy leaving the surface. Okay. Now, so q dot by a is equal to j minus g is equal to epsilon e b plus 1 minus epsilon into g minus g and this gives me epsilon into E b simple manipulation uh, simple uh, uh, calcul calculation will give you this this and then this is also equal to j minus g already we have written from there we can write that g is equal to uh, j minus epsilon E b by 1 minus epsilon and then again we can write that q dot by a is equal to uh, j minus uh, g and that is equal to uh, j minus uh, j minus epsilon into E b divided by 1 minus epsilon. Now, if you do the cal some calculations, then it can get as that q dot from here we can get as epsilon a by 1 minus epsilon into E b minus j. So, this gives an useful information that E b minus j by uh, uh, 1 minus epsilon by epsilon a. So, again this is uh, driving force by resistance. Okay. So, in this case also if we see that electrical analogy again If we apply, we will see that. So, here it is E b and this is the j and this is 1 minus epsilon by epsilon into a and also we should see that uh, this 1 minus epsilon by epsilon a is the resistance, 1 minus epsilon by epsilon a is called the resistance and these are the, the potentials, the emission potentials E b and j. Okay. And one thing we can understand that, that why does the resistance lie? This resistance is also called uh, surface resistance. So, the idea is like this suppose if I say that this is a, a body a surface as if there is a resistance into this for the emission and once this resistance is given by this, this layer say. So, once this resistance is gone, this is j and here in this, here it is g. So, if I draw it in, a, in even in a better way. So, suppose uh, this is a surface and by the side this is a hypothetical is an imaginary 
uh, condition you consider that here uh, this is j and this here it is E b okay. and this part in this region there is this resistance exists that means that allowing this energy now once it is the energy gone to this that this is free from the surface. So, now it can go to so, if I consider this another surface it can go to the another j this is j 1 if then it is j 2. So, now it is j 2. So, this is say E b 2 and if I see it is E b 1. So, this happens. So, it now it is allowed to move freely. So, surface has no nothing to do once it is in j. So, from one station here then it goes to the other station and in this going from one station to the other station there is one resistance and that resistance is called the surface resistance and very interestingly we can see justifiedly that E this surface resistance consists of two parts one is the area A and emissivity. V t epsilon and if you see that both area and emissivity they are all functions of the surface characteristics both are dependent on surface characteristics. So, therefore, we can understand that uh, in case of in case of black uh, if we say that in in case of uh, in case of black body uh, these resistances does not exist these two resistances. So, if I see in the uh, next page if we try to compare. So, suppose this is a surface this these two are uh, relative to black body case and these two are uh, related to the uh, non black body cases. So, this is surface 1 and this is surface 2 this is surface 1 surface 2. So, this is the black body case and they are non black body case. So, what we understand here it is uh, the resistance is there and this uh, this resistance is only lying in this region this is the resistance okay. and this is 1 by say A 1 F 1 2. So, this is say E B 1 and this is uh, E B 2, but in this case what happens non black body there is one resistance lying here one resistance lying here. So, this is due to this emissivity these two resistances may be different and therefore, I have given a two different. So, as if this and this is the third resistance which is basically 1 by a 1 f 1 2 this is the space resistance that is always existing due to the v factor region and this is this the surface resistance and this is another surface resistance that we get. So, it is here it is E b 1 here in this portion it is J 1 in this portion it is J 2 here it is E b 2 okay. and this surface resistance will be uh, 1 minus epsilon 1 by epsilon 1 A 1. So, so, this is the area is the A 1 and this surface resistance is uh, uh, 1 minus epsilon 2 by epsilon 2 A 2. So, this is the surface resistance. So, therefore, for this case if I just do the uh, right electrical analogy it becomes like this already we have seen this is E b 1 and this is E b 2 and it is 1 by A 1 F 1 2, but in the in this case we will get uh, there are some more resistances as we have seen okay. and this is E b 1 now and this is E b 2 and this is J 1 and this is J 2 and here it is 1 by A 1 F 1 2 as it was, but here it is epsilon 1 by sorry 1 minus epsilon 1 by A 1 epsilon 1 and this is 1 minus epsilon 2 by A 2 epsilon 2. So, this happens to be the case. So, therefore, uh, the if we see that uh, net current is we can say the based on the electrical analysis. So, net uh, heat transfer rate and if I say at steady state we know that u dot net will be equal to. So, from E b 1 to E b 2 by uh, for two cases uh, q dot net E b 1 minus E b 2 by this will be equal to uh, all the resistances uh, 1 minus epsilon 1 by epsilon 1 a 1 plus 1 by a 1 f 1 2 plus 1 minus epsilon 2 by epsilon 2 a 2 and in this case it will be only 1 by a 1 f 1 2 and that also is can be written j 1 minus j 2 in this case as by 1 by a 1 f 1 2 this is also the driving process 
j1 to j2 and here only only this is the resistance that act, that actually operating between these two potentials okay j1 and j2 fine and uh, in case of uh, we also know that eb1 is equal to uh, according to the stephen boltzmann equation this can be written as sigma into t1 to the power 4 minus t2 to the power 4 by summation of all ri resistances and here it is sigma into t1 to the power 4 minus t2 to the power 4 by only r the summation there is only one resistance over over here is involved ok. So, this is the neat uh, radiation or heat exchange between two bodies which are need not be uh, black which are non black bodies fine. Now, there is uh, a terminology that is uh, frequently used that emissivity factor or emissivity correction this is many times used that is a terminology that say if we say that for an enclosure made up of say uh, two surfaces 1 and 2 ok. So, q dot 1 2 net already we have seen can be written as f 1 f into epsilon into f 1 2 a 1 sigma t 1 to the power 4 minus t 2 to the power 4. We have already seen this part uh, what we have not seen is uh, uh, we have already seen that uh, here f 1 epsilon is called the emissivity correction or emissivity factor. And if you see that uh, f 1 epsilon is basically 1 by a 1 f 1 2 divided by 1 minus epsilon 1 by epsilon 1 a 1. So, it is just to comparing with this in fact, in the previous case we have just seen that q dot 1 to net and that is equal to we have seen as sigma t 1 to the power 4 minus t 2 to the power 4 by <laughs> 1 minus epsilon 1 by epsilon 1 a 1 ok plus uh, 1 by a 1 f 1 2 plus 1 minus epsilon 2 by uh, a 2 epsilon 2 into uh, it is a 1 by a 2 sorry uh, ok uh, that is what not a 1 a 2. So, it is uh, 1 minus epsilon 2 by a 2 epsilon 2 and then uh, this is actually is plus 1 by a 1 f 1 2 plus 1 minus epsilon 2 by a 2 uh, epsilon 2. If you see that uh, just try to link it. So, f 1 epsilon is this this part uh, into 1 by this then only it, it will be it, it, this 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 to match. So, this these are two just. So, basically uh, uh, f 1 epsilon this emissivity correction or emissivity correction factor it takes care of the resistances uh, being present between the two bodies ok. Now, coming to the uh, uh, this is about this uh, we have discussed about the uh, two surfaces black black surfaces or non black surfaces we have exchanged, we have seen that how the radiation exchange take place. Now, there can be more than two surfaces under that situation then it will becoming uh, that the diagram will be becoming electrical uh, diagram will be analog analogous diagram will be like a network diagram. So, uh, we will see that that is called radiation network for three surface for the time being we will see that three surface and they are exchanging with each other and they are not seeing anything else. So, three surfaces which see each other and nothing else this is very important. 
So, if it sees something else, then there will be the other surface also has to be taken into consideration. So, this is not the case. So, if I see, uh, so in that case, three because it is a three surface, it can be written as the triangular diagram uh, and this we can see that these are the resistances fine. So, here it is a triangular diagram and we can say that the three board three surfaces will write as the surfaces as 1, 2 and 3 are the surfaces. Okay. Typically, you can consider say, uh, uh, say a room, a room has got say uh, top floor, bottom floor and the surroundings. So, surrounding as a third surface, top floor is one surface and bottom floor is another surface like that. So, if I say that this is say E B 1, then it is J 1, then it is J 2, then it is E B 2 and this is E B 3, this is J 3 okay. and the resistances are 1 minus epsilon 1 by epsilon 1 A 1, this is 1 by A 1 F 1 2 is equal to 1 by A 2 F 2 1, this is 1 minus epsilon 2 by A 2 epsilon 2 correct and this part this is again the space resistance 1 by a 1 f 1 3 is equal to 1 by a 3 f 3 1 this is again one space resistance 1 minus epsilon 3 by a 3 epsilon 3 and this is 1 by a 2 f 2 3 and that is equal to 1 by a 3 f 3 2. So, these three are the uh, space resistances and these are the uh, sorry these three are these uh, uh, yes, phase resistances and these three are the surface resistances. Okay. Now, this is a typical network diagram for uh, uh, three bodies there can be like this way we can have radiational exchange and network diagram for n number of such bodies. Now, one thing I should say here that uh, 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 some important uh, considerations uh, particularly uh, one case is called re radiating surface. this is one case. In this case and another case is uh, say uh, uh, surface re radiating surface, insulated surface and another case is surface with large area. For three different situations re radiating surface, insulated surface or surface with large area how the analysis is being changed or modified that is what we are going to see. So, first we will see that the re radiating surface, what do we understand by re radiating surface? Is that the, the, it is the surface the radiate it is the surface that radiates the entire amount of radiation uh, it receives from other surfaces. That means, that uh, a re radiating surface does not absorb anything. Okay. So, what it does? It reflects everything whatever is coming to it, it gives to somebody else. So, and it does not uh, absorb anything and it does not have any radiation emission also. So, at steady state uh, there is because of the presence of re radiating surface there is no net radiation absorption or net radiation emission by the uh, re editing surface. So, uh, that means, uh, uh, G and J are equal for this case and Q dot net equal to 0 in the in case of re radiating surface. So, a re radiating surface therefore, a re radiating 
surface is functionally called as functionally adiabatic. So, that means there is there is no flow from the surface into the space or from the space into the surface there is no flow as we have seen that means if we say here uh, sometimes back I have seen that. So, this this flow is not there if we see from here to here this flow does not exist okay, because uh, the so j will be equal to E v uh, there is no flow for this case. So, we can think of that E radiating surface is having infinite resistance it can be thought of like that way. Okay. So, uh, uh, j is equal to E b for this case and as it say that means, it is an ex no flow it indicates no flow from space to uh, uh, surface or surface to space as I have seen. So, therefore, what happens is it can be thought of uh, as having infinite surface resistance not space resistance surface resistance. So, that means it is then we can say that, that insulating material is similar to insulating or insulated surface. So, insulated surface also show the similar kind of behavior okay. and that is as if insulated surface means no heat transfer is allowed that means lot of resistance is being applied for heat transfer from the surface to the space region and once it is coming to the space then it can go from one, one side to the other side that it can go, but the material has to come from the solid body to the space region which is the free region that has to come. So, basically what I mean to say from free space or free zone we can say that free region. Okay. Now, because of that reason we can say that this J node is in, in the network is called floating node okay. and then uh, the uh, network diagram becomes looks like that this is like that and here it is E B 1, it is J 1, it is sorry J 2, it is E B 2 and it is uh, J 3 that is all. So, this side is resistance cannot be written okay. and all these other resistances as it is already uh, that 1 minus epsilon 1 by epsilon 1 a 1, it is 1 by a 1 f 1 3, this is 1 by a 2 f 2 3, this is another space resistance a 1 by a 1 f 1 2 and then it is 1 minus epsilon 2 by a 2 epsilon 2. Fine. Now, another case is that a surface width for surface width large area. So, we understand when there is a large area, area is high that means what happens is that uh, space resistance if you see that space resistance is 1 minus epsilon by a into epsilon. So, when the area is large this epsilon is epsilon is uh, sorry area is very high that means it tends to 0 that means the space resistance tends to 0 that means the surface behaves like a black body. Okay. And then and then the radiational uh, diagram or uh, network diagram becomes like this okay. and here E B 1 
this is j 1 j 2 e b 2 and here it is j 3 and that is equal to e b 3 and that is equal to sigma t 3 to the power 4 and e b 1 is equal to sigma t 1 to the power 4 is equal to sigma t 2 to the power 4 and this is 1 by a 1 f 1 2 is equal to 1 by a 2 f 2 1 sorry this is a space resistance this is 1 minus epsilon 1 by a 1 epsilon 1 this is 1 by a 1 f 1 2 that is equal to 1 by a 2 f 2 1 and this is 1 by a 1 f 1 3 and that is equal to 1 by a 3 f 3 1 and this resistance does not exist here. So, it looks to be similar that uh, large area case and uh, insulating case looks to be similar, but they are not exactly the same thing ok. And this is 1 by a 2 f 2 3 will equal to 1 by a 3 f 3 2 and this portion is becoming 1 minus epsilon 2 by a 2 epsilon 2. Okay. So, now uh, this becomes the uh, radiation network diagram. Now, if you see that uh, the solution of this network, when we have a complicated case, then how to find out how to find the net heat transfer, how to find out for the network. Okay, because they are interconnected, they are interconnected. So, how to do this? It is like an electrical network. Uh, so, we have to appro apply Kirchhoff's law. For network is to be applied for the network. And what does it say? It says the law states the law states that uh, that the algebraic sum of of uh, heat currents. So, here it is I am telling not electrical current is a heating heat currents algebraic sum of heat currents at each node of network node of uh, radiation network is 0 at steady state. Okay. Now, what we will do is we will try to uh, take up a problem to discuss uh, this uh, uh, network uh, diagram and how to get a solution to this network. So, let us discuss a problem on this. The problem statement is two parallel plates is 1 meter by 2 meter ok the dimension are spaced 1 meter apart ok. One plate so these are two parallel plates they are 1 meter apart one plate is maintained at 800 degree centigrade and the other at 300 degree centigrade. The emissivity, the emissivities the emissivities of the plates are 0 0.3 and 0 0.5 respectively.
Okay. Now, the plates are located in a very large room. In a very large room at temperature 30 degree centigrade, okay, that is maintained. Okay. Now, the plates exchanges exchange heat with each other and with the room. Okay. Then the plate surfaces facing each other is to be to consider the plate surfaces facing each other only. That means, the back surfaces of the plates are not being taken into consideration for this case. Find the net transfer of each plate and the room. Find the net transfer of it to each plate and the room. So, this is the problem. So, we have two parallel plates and they are separated by a distance and the surrounding is that uh, room and so there are it is a three surface region. We can say it is a three surface situation and say there are two parallel plates of this kind they are placed with each other in a room. Okay. So, this is a plate 1 and this is a plate 2 and this portion is the surrounding is this is the room. Okay, so, this is the surface 3 and if we just see the diagram, okay, and okay, this. So, it is E B 1, 1 minus epsilon 1 by A 1 epsilon 1 this is j 1, this is 1 by a 1 f 1 2 and this is 1 by say this is e b 2, this is 1 minus epsilon 2 by a 2 epsilon 2 and this is 1 by a 1 f 1 3 and this is j 3, this is j 2 and this is 1 minus epsilon 3 by a 3 epsilon 3 and this is e b 3. So, this is the diagram already we have drawn several times. Now, if we write that T 1 is equal to 800 degree centigrade, these are the data given to show the, see the solution, uh, 800 degree centigrade is equal to 1073 Kelvin, here area A 1 is equal to 2 meter square, F 7 1 is equal to 0 0.3, T 2 is equal to 300 degree centigrade and that is equal to 573 Kelvin and A 2 is equal to sorry yes a 2 is equal to again 2 meter square and epsilon 2 is equal to 0 0.5 and t 3 is the room it is at 30 degree centigrade and it is that is it is equal to 303 kelvin and a 3 is equal to say I will tell it tends to infinity. Okay. It is a large room. Now, what we have to find out is that uh, view factors. So, f 1 2 between two plates. So, to find out the view factors here we can see that this is the two between two parallel plates here uh, in the present situation uh, b is the b versus this b equals to uh, uh, b happens to be uh, uh, w by d and that is equal to 2.0 so b for b equal to 2 in this region and a happens to be l by d is equal to say 1.0 and a is equal to 1.0 uh, for this this value okay this value so this 2 and uh, it is somewhere here so it is like this like this so this is 0 0.285 so if we see that then we can get that f 12 is equal to 0 
t f 1 1 equal to 0. So, f 1 3, so all the view factors you have to find out, right? This is 1 minus 0 0.285 and this is equal to 0 0.715. Now, coming to the other view factors f 2 2 equal to 0, f 2 1 is equal to 0 0.285 and f 2 3 is equal to 1 minus 0 0.285 equals to 0 0.715 like that. So, then now if we see the resistances to calculate we have 1 minus epsilon 1 by a 1 epsilon 1 that will be equal to 1.167 then 1 by a 1 f 1 2 that will be equal to 1.754 and then 1 minus epsilon 2 by a 2 epsilon 2 and that is 1 minus 0 0.5 by 2 into 0 0.5 and this is becoming 0 0.5 then 1 by a 2 f 2 3 equals to 1 by 2 into 0 0.715 and that is equal to 0 0.7 and then 1 by a 1 f 1 3 also is equal to 0 0.7. So, these are the resistances we have calculated. Now, we have to go for the uh, uh, analysis for the node for node j 1. If we see it is E b 1 all the currents coming on node j 1 E b 1 minus j 1 by the resistance this is driving force by the resistance 1.167 plus j 2 minus j 1 by 1.754 uh, plus E v 3 that is equal to j 3 uh, this is equal to j 3 minus because it is a large room j 1 by 0 0.7 and this is has to be equal to 0 okay. and E v 1 is known E v 1 is equal to sigma t 1 to the power 4 this is 5.669 into 10 to the power uh, minus 8 into 1073 to the power 4 watt per meter square and that is equal to 75.15 kilowatt per meter square. Similarly, E b 2 will be equal to sigma t 2 to the power 4 and this is becoming 6.11 kilowatt per meter square and E b 3 is equal to sigma t 3 to the power 4 is equal to 0 0.48 kilowatt per meter square. So, now if say I say this equation 1 now putting the values of values of E b i and rearranging what we get uh, j 2 minus 5 j 1 is equal to minus 114. Now, for node j 2 we will have again so, j 1 minus j 2 by the resistance is 1.754 plus E v 3 minus j 2 by 0 0.7 plus E b 2 minus j 2 by 0 0.5 equals to 0. Okay. So, for this case again putting again we can get. So, this I, I will say 1. So, this is small equation 2 and if we rearranging we can get putting the values and rearranging we will get here as uh, uh, 0 0.143 j 1 minus j 2 equals to minus 12.90. From here I will get J 1 is equal to uh, 24.14 kilowatt per meter square and J 2 is equal to uh, 6.7 kilowatt per meter square. And once I know J 1 and J 2 then heat loss by surface 1 is equal to E b 1 minus J 1 by 1 minus epsilon 1 by a 1 epsilon 1 and this value is equal to 75.15 minus 29.14 by 1.167 and this happens to be 43.7 kilowatt heat loss by surface 2 equals to E b 2 minus j 2 by 1 minus epsilon 2 a 2 epsilon 2 and that is equal to 6.11 minus 6.7 by 0 0.5 and this is equal to minus 1.18 kilowatt. So, it is a heat gain case okay. and then uh, heat gain by room and that is equal to J 1 minus J 3 by 
1 by a 1 f 1 3 plus j 2 minus j 3 by 1 by a 2 f 2 3. So, this is equal to 24.14 minus 0 0.48 by 0 0.7 plus 6.7 minus 0 0.48 divided by uh, 0 0.7. So, this gives me uh, 42.68 kilowatt. So, the total heat gained gained is equal to uh, by surface 2 plus surface plus room is equal to uh, 42 point uh, sorry uh, this is equal to uh, 1.18 plus 42.68 that is equal to uh, 43.80 kilowatt and total heat loss by surface lost by surface 1 is equal to 43.70 kilowatt. So, that means uh, these are same they are nearly same. So, uh, that this difference is this difference is uh, for uh, approximation in calculation approximation in calculation. So, we can say that heat loss is equal to heat gain okay, by this process we can see. So, this is the way we have to uh, do the analysis for rate of heat transport and uh, who is losing how much energy, who is gaining how much of radiation energy that can be think of that can be thought of. And one thing I should tell over here is that it is the case of uh, when we have taken a large room similarly uh, suppose it is a box top floor, top surface, bottom surface and, and there is the surrounding of the box as the third surface like that way the things can be carried on and the uh, uh, problems can be solved. So, this is all about for this lecture. In the next lecture we will try to discuss on uh, radiational shield and something on uh, the radiation by the gas. Okay. Thank you very much.